Hello all you heroes, villains, and innocent bystanders. Welcome to another episode of An Angel and Her Unicorn Comic Book Reviews. I'm Alan the Unicorn, and with me today is... Just James. Just James. I feel like we like... I have to come up with a thing. No, no, I actually like Just James. I think that's good. Everybody else has kind of got like things, and so like the fact that you don't have one is actually kind of unique. So it's a good <laughs> thing. I like it. Okay. Like, And I feel I'm like Just, just James. James. It's kind of like, Just Jack. Yeah, <laughs> just James. I think it works for you. Uh, we will be spoiling the books of the week. We're going to be reviewing uh, books. Uh, so if you haven't read your books for the week, make sure you stop the video and come back to us after you are done, or if you're okay, or with decide spoilers. that you don't care. Yeah, just you know, maybe uh, this will whet your appetite for anticipation or actually read it and see what they do. Um, but eventually, I'll have descriptions, uh, or I'll have the description down below. I'll have the time so that way you can skip right to the book. Or you can listen to us ramble through the whole entire video, which is what we want. We enjoy. If you get a chance, like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to have more people. We'd love to start a conversation if possible. Um, but until then, um, you want to go? Sure. Oh, and James is fresh out of Comic Con, Planet Con, Planet Comic Con in uh, Kansas City. Yeah, so he just got back. He uh, went and saw a whole bunch of things and did a whole bunch of like stuff and signatures and dollar box diving and. Yeah, anything. It was their twentieth anniversary of the con, and they were kind of doing it up. And was there was there anything like what, what was the most exciting thing? Uh, it snowed. Oh, that that had to be fun. Yeah, that had to. Make I was not a expecting difficult. that at all. <laughs> um, did you get to meet anybody new? Uh, Jim Starlin, and finally got to meet. I'm a butcher's name. Oliver Cop Copier. <gasps> Because he, I, I'd been to two or three cons before, I'm so trying to meet him, and it, he would have to cancel for one reason or another. So was finally, he, nice? he, he was very nice. What did you get? Did you get him to sign a book? Uh, a couple uh, issues of Thor. I would have him sign my boobs. I love him so much. His art is so amazing. I loved him like on all of the stuff that he did, like the House of M stuff he did was amazing. Um, he did. Uh, uh, the Magic he's Order was really Order. good. Um, he did some Avengers stuff. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff that was really, really good. I really like his stuff. Yeah, he's. I, I hope he's nice. You know, you always have those people that you build up in your head, and you're like, I really hope they're nice, because if they're not, then yeah, I'm going to cry. All right, so go ahead. We'll get to the comic books now. Okay, okay so my first book is Dial H for Hero by uh, Humphreys and Keonis... Uh, once again, they don't have a title page telling what their first names are, but we'll come to that. <laughs> they need pronunciation. So, DC has had the Dial H for Hero at, back in the days when phones had dials. Ask your parents, kids. Um, <laughs> or ask letters. your grandparents. <laughs> um, they had a series where... There was like a magical phone booth or a magical telephone, and if you dialed H on it, you got heroic power, random heroic powers for one hour. Um, and it was, it's kind of got a reputation for being goofy, and they, they cover that in this book. So uh, it starts out with a uh, young kid, Miguel. And he has a diving accident, and they're rendering aid to him, and Superman heard, uh, and flew and picked him up and flew him to the hospital. And the Miguel, that was like the highlight of his life, and he said he was always trying to chase that rush, so he kind of becomes a daredevil, and keeps trying to more and more stuff to get back to feeling like he felt when when Superman was flying, flying him. Uh, and then he works... Uh, they say his parents die. It, it, it sounds like it. it's a story that they're going to cover later. Yeah. They just... Um, but he's working for his uncle... On a food truck that's all about mayonnaise. So gross. Ugh. Out of all the things you could have picked, like yeah, because there's like mayonnaise fries and mayonnaise sandwich. Ugh. Yeah, so yeah. nasty. Yeah. So uh, 
and then he meets uh, he meets a girl that is like constantly running away. I guess she's famous for running away all the time, and she's talking about you know wanting to just get out of town, and he wants to get out of town because he's tired of working on the mayo truck, and so uh, his uncle catches him and does the evil uncle thing and makes him clean out the mayo traps. Because oh. <laughs> he wants sounds... to go he wants to go to this ramp thing and he's like, yeah. no, you have to clean out the mayo traps. So he's like... Yeah. So uh, he sneaks out later and goes to this ramp trying to get the rush again and he crashes and he's falling to his death and the magic telephone appears dun, 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 dun. and it tells him... Uh, uh, dial H for hero and he turns into uh, uh, monster truck <laughs> it's like straight like a, out of the 80s yeah it's like 80s. 80s like crazy yeah. like I, I, yeah like more to the month kind of villain and when he picks up the phone all these uh, side characters get the little uh four uh, H thing on the and like they like know that the phone has been activated yeah. again and they're all like oh no <laughs> so uh, but yes he becomes monster truck with the monster pa- truck he be- uh, he's uh, every thousand years the Earth needs a new eternal champion of trucking <laughs> <laughs> truck yeah. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Yeah. I thought it was, oh, I'll talk about this in a minute, but we'll go ahead. But, like, yeah, so then there's a over the top, you know, eighties, early nineties uh scene. I'm I'm surprised he doesn't have any uh, uh, uh pouches. Pou- pouches. Yeah, yeah I'm surprised pouches. it needs more pouches. Say ten four to vengeance. <laughs> and uh <laughs> Only I have the strength to restore the cosmic balance between engine and cargo. <laughs> so, and then it wears off because it only lasts for an hour. And he wakes up in a uh, used car lot, and apparently he's been smashing uh, used cars. And whoever's in the car lot uh, is like, please, please stop. <laughs> please don't kill me. So, uh,. Then the the mayo truck pulls up and it's the runaway girl um, has stolen her his uncle's truck and she's like you want to get out of town and then the magic hero phone appears to him again and tells him that uh, uh, he needs to protect the device from the agents of the Thunderbolt Club and but da 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 and then that's that's the end so it's just fun over the top just yeah. si- just silliness because you have to be silly every now and again well there was like a there truck was a, yeah <laughs> once every thousand years that <laughs> um i feel like so there was a series a couple years ago that did the dial h for hero but they did it a little bit more serious and i think it was a little bit more like sadistic um, I didn't read it, all of it. I read bits and pieces of it, and it was a lot. They've more. tried over and yeah. over and yeah. over. Um, but so, what did you think of this? I'm curious your opinion, and then I'll tell mine. For what it was, I liked it. It was it it was silly. It knew it was silly. Um. I probably would seek this out, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was just a... It was a fun read. I don't think I'm going to pick up a lot of the issues. I might try out the next one just to see what they're going to do with it. But I don't see it lasting very long. It doesn't have a strong... I didn't have a lot of time to read my books this week, and so I was like, so here's something I can... I can yeah. Pop yeah. through pretty quick. I definitely quick feel like and... it has an audience, though. It could definitely like a younger reader, which is kind of what they're gearing things towards, anyways. With this kind of this line, yeah. And I mean, it's it's okay. It is what it's it is. It's the Wonder line that yeah. they're also with the the Wonder Twins yeah. and the the uh, DC segmenting all of their the young justice books into uh, kind of age or age appropriate. Well, and and just. 
like there's the metal books and they have a little metal thing yeah. and there's Justice League and Batman and so they're, they're kind of segment you know if you like this book get, this bo- one will get books with, with this yeah. line and you'll enjoy they're them they're go together um, I just don't I, I, I definitely think like I said it has an audience but the only thing is I wish they would have took a little more serious tone with it I think they could have actually done something really because um, the Miguel character was actually kind of neat I kind of want to know what's going to happen with him and her and that's kind of interesting and then the one thing I don't like about the the one thing that I'm like I definitely did not like was I did not like the art style change it was very jarring I understand why they did it because they went for an 80's character but then I think it would have been better if they would have done an 80's character in the art style like if he was 80's and then the rest of the art style was the same as it was it was Literally hard to look at yeah. the monster truck, especially after seeing this beautifully colored and rendered art before. Well, and it's a little minimalistic, yeah. a simple coloring, yeah. and then it's and then it's just this. It's just jar, especially this the big splash. It's page. just it's very jarring. Yeah, and you you're having trouble figuring out what's going. And yes, that's was the style of yeah. what is going on I understood why they did that but I think what they order is it in right. and yeah it was just they would have had be- I think that I would have been more on board if they would have had that even if they made him look like the 80s and kept him like that but in that kind of other the other art style background but I understand like why they did it yeah I, and that was the only thing that I was just like uh, I could have done without that because I I was really on board with it. I was like, okay, I'm interested in that. And then when they showed the hero, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. And then they kept going with that style. Truck, I was like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that one's like, truck, no. <laughs> Art, no. <laughs> um, but, like, I mean, for what I, I'm with you. For what it was, it was a quick read. It was it, it was fun. It was kind of entertaining, energetic. Um, the coloring was really beautiful. Um, yeah, so I, I'm interested to see. Interesting first start. Now... I'm not going to get too invested in this because no Dial H book has ever lasted long. Right. <laughs> I feel like they could. There's there's definitely room to go through, but... But his, his historically... History, has, historically, don't get attached. <laughs> don't get attached to it. Now, uh, one other thing, it, the, the uh, you know, chasing the high of danger or something, I thought there was no bad consequences. There was no... Telling kids, you know, if you if yeah. you have a near death experience and it, go chase the high more, yeah, that that's that's going to get you killed. And there there aren't any actual magic telephones out there. It's sad to say. Well, I mean, telephone that we know is of, magical that we know. Of. I mean, the fact that we're videoing on our telephone now that's pretty magical. It's like witchcraft. Okay. All right, <laughs> on to the next book. So I'm going to do, um, it's a Comixology original, huh. and it's a, number one, it's Stone Star. Um, it is done by, story is Jim Zub, and the art is done by Max Dunbar. Um, this one in particular is kind of like a space odyssey, uh, uh, like space fantasy um, genre. So is that like... You know, Netflix is doing their own program, and Comicsology is Comicsology is doing, doing their, their own. own. Right, oh, Comicsology cool. started doing their own books, and so if you sign up for their service, like uh, I'm a, I'm a comic, you don't have to. You can be just you can go to Comicsology and just buy their books, and you don't have to be part of their subscription. Um, but I actually belong to the scrip- subscription because you get money off of the books you download, or you get percentage off the books you download, and you get um, the some they put on Comicsology for free. So I can just borrow them and then give them back, and I don't have to. They're not on my. Yeah, that, that's how I end up getting a lot of. I call it reading fodder, reading fodder done. So, but with this, this, this is like their new. Like they started doing s- several books that are just just for them and just digital. So and this was one of their newer ones, um, and this is a kind of their comic, uh, like or their cosmic uh, odyssey genre. It talks about this planet where uh, this floating arena shows up and it shoots its little harpoons into the the uh, surface of the of this planet and so that means it's going to be staying there for a while so then they start un- unloading all their stuff and getting their resources out and getting ready for this gladiator pit kind of a thing 
But the main character is a little boy, and he and he and this uh, his little lizard friend um, uh, are stealing like uh, supplies from this this truck. They get caught. He uh, the boy tries to the little boy tries to escape, and when he does, he uses some kind of power, like he calls it the kick. And so he kicks up this machine, and the the the, mach- the machine hauling all the the materials like takes off and just flying through this bazaar and going everywhere. And it ends up crashing and almost uh, knocking over this guy. Well, this guy, like, throws his hat off, jumps over the thing, grabs the boy, and the, the thing crashes, and he lands on his feet. And ends up, he is a trainer for um, the gladiators in this pit. And so he kind of helps him with the guards, and he's like, he's like, why did you help me with the guards? And he's like, well, you know, I, I, I was a young boy, too, and I didn't want to make the mistakes. You know, I made mistakes, too. I, want, I didn't want you to go to jail for some stupid, you know, stupid things that you're trying to do. So he takes him to, and then he kind of talks him into take, uh, or taking a walk with him to the gladiator pits, and it's almost like he wants to train him, um, but he talks about uh, certain fighters are, they bond with their, um, like, little avatar people, um, so it's kind of like they have a robot, and then they have the fighters, and um, he meets this one female that is a fighter, and she comes in, and he she's trying to, like, kind of, like, uh, intimidate him, so she... She's messing around with him, and she goes to punch him while he takes his little kick thing, and he gets ready to activate his little power, and it takes over, and uh, the robot uh, that she's bonded with kind of stops her, and she's like, "Why are you doing this? Why would you? Uh, why are you, you know, stopping?" And he's like, he, "She's like, we're bonded." And, he, and the kind of trainer realizes what the boy's doing, and but the boy doesn't realize what he's doing, so he tries to talk him into maybe like becoming a, maybe becoming a gladiator, and he said. You know, you can do this, you can run, you know, run and, and, and do all these, like, scams all your life, or you can come in and try to, you know, be something different. Um, so the boy's like, no, I think I'll pass. So he goes back to his little place, and uh, his friend, because uh, his friend got lost in the shuffle, and so he found his friend back at uh, back at their little apartment, and uh, the friend wants to knock over another, um, do another heist. And the guy's like, we just got out of this one, why do you, he's like, this one's perfect, he goes, there won't be that many people and all this other stuff. It'll be perfect. So he, um, he, they're hiding, getting ready to go do this heist with all these supplies that are getting ready to move. We'll come to find out the supplies are actually people. Like, it's always people. So there's, there's these aliens and the guards are trying to take them, like, take them to another place. And as he kind of shoves over the, the, the matriarch of the, of the group. And so the young, young one kind of, it's, tries to stop him um and so he's like well you know now you have to pay for your mistakes for you know hurting me so now guards were gonna kill all of them so then it was to be continued but da 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 so i i I mean more likely the boy will probably help him out and help them escape wasn't anything really exciting nothing really new um the art was really kind of a quirky cartoony kind of art um it worked well with the book because there was aliens in it. You know, aliens do have the kind of quirky, cartoony factor anyways. So, I mean, like, there's some interesting things to it. I don't know if I'll pick an issue number two. I probably... I more likely will just because I, I'm already part of the subscription, so it's not like I don't... It's not... I'm not going to... I don't have to pay for it, so I'll probably read it just to see where it's going to go with that. Comicsology's done okay with their stuff. Um, I think they try to think too much out of the box. It's almost like they're trying to be two independent independent books and a lot of it is just ends up being garbage so they they have a couple things that are kind of okay and and then but this one was just okay like i give it probably a three out of five unicorn horns nothing you know it might find an audience uh, i but i don't i i don't foresee it going far or being you know very excited um you know people won't be talking about it very much i don't think you know what i mean so yeah, but if you get a chance, check it out. See what you think. I don't know. Maybe uh, I might be wrong. I'm not, but maybe <laughs> it might happen occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, we didn't rate the uh, wonder. We didn't rate Dial H. Uh, I gave it three out of five. I think it's an average book. It's two and a half, three. Yeah. yeah. For what it is, like what I tell Terry, it's it's a uh, it's not my book, but it may be somebody else's. <laughs> Yep. All right, what's your next one? My next one is uh, the new relaunch of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Aww. 
I like the old one. Where she's like evil. Oh, the Chilling Tales. Yes, of that was so good. I think that one's the kind of what the what the Netflix show is based on. Yeah. Yeah. This one is this one a little bit more. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh bummer. <laughs> So this one starts out, she's facing down a monster, and then they uh, do the 13 hours ago, because <laughs> you have to start with the most, Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't particularly like the time jump thing, that seems to be how we do things today, but... It's like, catch your interest, and then we're going to tell the story. It's yeah, like, it's like, just, just, story just to tell the story, yeah. yeah. Just, just tell a better story. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. So, we're we're solving problems here. Yeah. So, uh, we all know who Sabrina is, but it's it's kind of a, a retelling. Uh, she's. They insinuate that she has promised that she wasn't going to use magic. Um. And the first thing she does is see that her white hair, and she's like, no, that won't help me fit in at school. So she changes her hair to blonde, and uh, Salem calls her on it. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then she's dreading going to school, uh, saying that... Uh, uh, the... The kids are kids are worse than any supernatural monsters. Uh, it's a true story. So, uh, true story. So, uh, she goes down and meets her aunts, and uh, one of them notices she's changed her hair with magic, and the other doesn't. And <laughs> the the uh, and one of them makes her a breakfast smoothie with. Uh, twigs and yeah, <laughs> goo. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, she's getting ready to go to school, and she's putting on her brave face, and then she gets to school, and she's oh, this is terrible, and she immediately runs into the popular girl who who uh, treats her like crap, uh, and then she meets uh, meets the hunky guy. Harvey. And yeah. falls in love with him. My boyfriend. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> so, uh... And then she's bored in class. Uh, they're reading one of the books, and she says, uh... I guess... I, I don't know if she's, like, ancient, or she just has access to old witch history, but she's, she's like, these textbooks aren't correct, so she casts another spell... So it makes the textbooks uh, correct, and it freaks all the kids out. <laughs> and uh, then she sees uh, the the popular girl um, bullying uh, another student and make her do everything, um, which becomes important later. And then she meets uh, a dark and swarthy uh, gentleman that she's another guy she's got a crush on and then casts a spell to uh, uh, make him think that he's uh, uh, destined to hook up with her <laughs> um, so she uses a spell counter too spell number three yeah yeah it's because she <laughs> promised she wouldn't use magic yeah. and it just and I guess they were trying to you know the magic has consequences and even small thing that'll add up and they end up so, uh, she goes out to gym class, which she's like, gym's the worst. <laughs> and, uh, she meets the girl that the popular girl was bullying and kind of befriends her. And, uh, the, uh, <laughs> popular, the popular girl doesn't like uh -huh. that because she likes her, uh, minion. So she, uh, she messes with them while Sabrina casts a spell on her. Showing that, telling that her, uh, uh, will reveal her true self, and she, uh, the popular girl falls in a <laughs> puddle, puddle, puddle and stalks off, and then they, uh, Sabrina and her new friend, uh, 
the new friend is like, you know, you befriended me, and that's a really big deal. And Sabrina's like, no, it's not. And the new friend's like, yes, it really is. Um, so all three of them end up getting detention. Um, so they're walking home, and a monster, the monster from the beginning of the book jumps them. And uh, Sabrina has history with monsters and the other gal doesn't. So Sabrina's trying to protect her and then uh, she tries to cast a spell but she can't and then she looks and it's the uh, popular girl and the swarthy guy were magical creatures and when she had cast her earlier spell to tell the gal to reveal her true self uh. she didn't realize that the true self was the monster so she <laughs> caused the monster to come out and now it's to be continued. So da 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 da. Be careful what you wish for and all that. that good stuff. So magic has consequences. Yeah. But uh, you know, a lot of teen angst, so a lot of high school sucks. Yeah. Um, which it did, and uh, so is, that makes me kind of sad, though. I mean, like I, actually, I mean, like it didn't look like it was too bad. I mean. Again, I feel like it's definitely like the dial H for Hero where it's is lending itself to a younger audience or a certain type of audience. But that the the tales of Sabrina the the old the other one, that that was really good. Like I thought it was very original, it's kinda of out of the box. They kinda of went like Melissa Joan Hart hard. could have easily played this version of yeah. Sabrina and Yeah. But I like the newer version. I like the Netflix version. Yeah. I think that one's a lot more interesting where they're kind of doing this dichotomy where she's she wants to be good but she's still kind of evil that's just who she is you know and so she's uh that makes me sad like <laughs> the art looked really good though i thought that the art was pretty good was for what it was it wasn't great it the, but it, kind of, yeah it kind of fit the thing it was a it was a little sloppy in places but yeah. i i think on purpose yeah but uh Little young, cartoony, yeah. bright and colory, and yeah, yeah, lots of colors, lots of bright colors. Like well, and backgrounds are not real well defined. Yeah. So but yeah, that's not too bad. So what would you rate it? I'd give it a well oh, three. three. Yeah, holes. I don't think I'll be picking it up just because I like the old series better. The old series was actually like something that was new and exciting and kind of different and yep. gave gave an edge to Sabrina. This is more like, yeah, Sabrina light. <laughs> yep. Sabrina diet. <laughs> well, it's Archie Sabrina as yes. opposed to... That's There you go. It's Archie Sabrina. That's true. So I'm going to do... Um, it's by IDW, which automatically puts me on edge. I'm like, uh... <laughs> IEW man, you need to get your stuff together. <laughs> your books aren't the best, uh, but uh, I'm gonna. Re I read Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, which um, I love. The TV series or the Netflix series is really good. Um, uh, I remember when Glow was out. I used to love watching Glow because it was just so hokey and over the top. But at the time, it was just something that was so exciting, and you were just like, "This is like wrestling," you know. Wrestling at the time, anyways, is just so crazy. Um, but this particular book is written by. Teen, uh, teeny the script slayer Howard and art was Hannah Soros Rex Templar um, so this uh, it talks about the girls they show up for and after this remind me to tell who Sabrina's by because I oh go ahead I was, no go ahead All right. we'll, we'll so we'll um, tell you later <laughs> we won't forget at least old <laughs> um, so they, they all the people show up and it's it's based on the show, uh, the Netflix show, and not the actual original Glow. So this is Netflix show Glow, and um, they show up for their rehearsals, uh, their fightings, and and they there's something nothing's on the calendar, so they think they actually have a free weekend. They're like super excited. Everybody's really excited that they're gonna get a free weekend. They're all talking about what they're gonna do, and uh, the uh, uh, Machu Picchu character, um, she was um, oh who is she based on? I can't remember. Do you remember any of the original clothes? Anyway, she's the the uh, the heavier set Hawaiian lady. This is her like kind of her character on the show, um, but she comes from a family of wrestlers, and so she wanted to go to this big wrestling event that has all these uh, all these major wrestling people in it, and 
you know, there's going to be events there. So that she says she's super excited. And everybody else is making plans. Like, one girl has to get her wisdom teeth out. One girl wants to go just sleep all day. One girl wants to go get high. And, and uh, so they all, they just have all these different things. Come to find out they actually are working. And the uh, sleazy uh, manager has booked them for this place, for this event that the, the uh, other girl was talking about, the wrestling event. He booked him for them. And he's like, that, that's what we're doing. And he goes, oh, and you have to pay to go there, too. And they're like, wait a minute. We're making appearances, and then we have to pay? And he's like, yes, $75 each from everybody. So they all go and try to, like, they start making schemes of how they're going to be able to get $75. So the lady that plays the uh, Russian character and the uh, all-American girl um, in the show, they kind of uh, butt heads because she slept with her husband, and all this, you know, hilarity ensued. And so she ends up... Uh, they the way they raise money is they have like a a public fight and uh, the Russians like wish knocks her over and then the the all American girl wins and she, I don't know she's like this little country accent and, and she's like uh, that's right I'd never be friends with communist scum <laughs> and of course everybody throws money in the hat so they make their money that way um the other girls they make pot brownies <laughs> and sell them for ten dollars a piece um a one the the smart girl but she's not smart uh, she yeah she plays the nerd like she wants to be smart so she's gonna make her money by winning the car prize money for a trivia night and she gets all the answers wrong <laughs> like she's like she's like ding she's like, <laughs> the the emancipation proclamation uh, emancipation proclamation ding oxidative phosphorylation ding the nineteen fifty eight San Francisco Giants and the guy's like will you please Quit buzzing in. You've got none of them right. <laughs> so, so she gets. She doesn't get the money. So the her boyfriend, who's rich, just pays for her to go. Um, the wolf lady, the lone wolf girl. She's <laughs> she's kind of crazy, but she finds this dog and she brings it back to the guy, and the, the owner gives her money. Um, so that's how she she goes. They eventually get to the van. Um, the lady that has uh, um got her wisdom teeth taken out. She's high on pills. <laughs> like after, just, they're like like. Okay, get in the van. She goes, is this for a wrestling? It's really not a lot of lights in here. And it's like, no, this is the van. Just get in. So she's going to be propped up the whole time. So uh, then the uh, Machu Picchu girl, uh, she finally realizes that her brother and everybody is going to be there at this wrestling convention. And she's like, oh, no, we can't go. Like, I, I know. She gets really nervous because her family is going to see her wrestle, and she gets really upset. So they show up, and they think that they're just going to be guests, but come to find out they're part of the event. And um, the sleazy manager has uh, um, uh, put the, pit them against the um, the star primas. And the star primas are like these like bodybuilding women and like these really fit athletic ladies, as were the ladies with glow or not. So that's, uh, and that was where it ends. So in the next book, they're going to end up fighting the star they're primas. They're going to get their asses kicked. Yeah, exactly. I, I, Good times. Yeah. Because they're all skinny and pretty and cute, and the primas are probably going to be like, like pick you up over your head kind of people. <laughs> so, but like I, I don't know. Honestly, I think it's just a fun read. It is really like there is no meat to it. It is not like heavy. It is not anything that's super um, uh, uh, detrimental to anything. I don't think they change any of the stories. It's just a fun, silly story. It's cute. Um, but I, I mean, I don't think it'll go long. But the show is, I feel that way also. It has like a little bit of a feeling. But I feel like with the show, they have a little bit of weight. Like there was a, you know, there was an abortion one. There was a like a girl sleeping with the other girl or with her husband. And then there's the, the daddy issues. One one of the, the manager has a daughter and <coughs> all the stuff that kind of <coughs> they Excuse have me. to the drama. As where the, obviously the comic book does not have that kind of drama in it. It's just kind of the, the lightheartedness, which is fun. Um, and the, the art is very much a cartoony kind of art, which I thought was an interesting choice that they made. Um, I feel like the art is really fun, but I don't think... For me, personally, I don't feel like it fits the book well. Um, it, I'll have to wait to see how like the wrestling scenes go, because I probably will pick up issue two. Um, but... I I don't foresee it kind of you know it's it like like this particular panel you know it's got her and she's got these weird googly eyes and kind of this odd thing and it's just I don't know like it's cute art but I don't know if it fits a story so 
All in all, I'd probably give about two out of five unicorn horns, probably two and a half, and just because I kind of enjoy this, I enjoy Glow. I think it's a fun, fun premise, and I would have liked it to obviously have been a little bit more weighted or have a little bit more story behind it, and not just be this funny, silly book. Uh, but we'll see. So two out of five to be continued, <laughs> possibly more, because I will pick up the next issue. Um, and plus the art is like I said like the art is fun so I think if there was a different artist maybe a little bit more realistic or a little bit uh, fit the book or the, the tone of it a little bit more might have been a little bit higher up too so yeah okay interesting did you ever watch Glow when it was out? I didn't I wanted to and May it's always again, late but yeah I didn't I didn't watch actual Glow or the series or the series. So, all right, my oh, and uh, Sabrina was by uh, da, da, da. uh Kelly Thompson and Veronica Fish and Andy Fish and Jack Morelli. Or possibly just morale. So <laughs> possibly. <laughs> well, I think we're just gonna refer, refer to them as the artist. <laughs> this book was done by another artist. This book was done by a different writer. <laughs> you no longer have names. So my last book is uh, Darth Vader: Dark Visions Two. Sounds ominous. Um. It's by Dennis Hopeless Hallam and Brian Level. Um, it seems to kind of be... A, 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 it's only two issues in, but the two stories were not related. It's, it's almost like an anthology showing what Darth Vader is like. Um, in the first... Uh, in the first issue, uh, during a fight, uh, Vader crashes on this planet, and the planet had been ravaged by this giant monster creature, and like the the whole culture of the planet it revolved around when this cle creature was awake and slept and everything. Well, Vader lands on the creature, wakes up, and ends up killing it. Yeah, he. And the people of the planet see him as a the God. dark the dark knight savior and <laughs> and uh you are a God. Just, yeah. So so in this uh in the second one, uh the Empire is uh uh had captured a rebel spy and the spy got away. Um and Good for him. The rest of the uh, the commander of the Star Destroyer that was chasing him uh, obviously upset. Said, "Yeah, he's upset. That this is a failure. It's unacceptable." And everybody else is like, "Well, you know, we got this information. We did this, <laughs> and the you know, all in all, we did pretty good." <laughs> and uh, the uh, so they're all trying to put a good spin on it. Um, and so they, uh, they, they, they decide they feel good about what happened in this mission. So they call in to, uh, the emperor to report what happened. And the emperor, uh, uh, sends him a, uh, communique saying, uh, uh, congratulations on all your successes. I'm sending Darth Vader to, uh, pick up the spy that you captured. Um... And uh, <laughs> we're gonna die. Yeah, we're all gonna die. So then they they have a flashback. There was a uh, a conference where uh, a a group of commanders had had let Darth Vader down, and he killed them all. And and this guy was like a junior officer in the side, and so Vader let him live, but. He let him know that failure is unacceptable, so he's terrified of Vader. So he's like, "Vader's coming to cap to uh, pick up a guy we don't have. We got to go get him." <laughs> and uh, and they're like, 
but we don't know where he is. And they're like, he's like, figure it out. We, <laughs> you don't understand. We don't have a choice. We don't have we a choice. To together. So uh, they leave their flight group and all the rest of the group's like, uh, wh- wh- where are you guys going? You were ordered to stay. And, uh, so then they, uh, the rebels in a asteroid field and they're like, sir, you can't take this ship through an asteroid field. And he's like, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he just makes choice, bad choice after bad choice. Cause he's like, I got to get this guy. Or we're, we're all, we're all toast. And, uh, <laughs> Then he, uh, yeah, so they're chasing him through the asteroid field, uh, and then the, uh, uh, the rebel spy, uh, goes down to the planet below, and, uh, all the commanders, is, oh man, there's sandstorm down there, we don't have any scanners or anything, we, you know, we, we just wait him out. The guy's like, Vader's on his way. There's no waiting. He's like, launch every fighter we have and go down there. And they're like, uh, w- w- you know, we're, our losses are going to be 50% just from the sandstorm. And he's like, launch them now. <laughs> and uh, uh, he is just. He's just freaking out. His eyes are popping out. Yeah, he's he's like, like, his neck is tight. Yeah. Uh, there's no time to wait. Lord Vader is coming here to collect that rebel, and we are not going to disappoint him. So they send all these fighters down, and all the the fighter pilots are like, "Is he serious? <laughs> what, what? No, what? Then we can't fly in this." And he's like, y- "You, you will now." So, uh, and the rebel pilots like, uh, "Why isn't this working? Yeah. <laughs> they would have never chased me before." So, uh, uh, he. Uh, the rebel pilot, uh, only a few of the TIE fighters make it out of the planet, and the rebel pilot shoots them down. So now they have no fighters because they launched all their fighters down to the planet. And uh, the uh, the second command, the or the commander's like, uh, there goes the rebel ship, chase him. And the, the second man's like, uh, we don't have any more fighters. What do you want me to chase him with? He's like, this ship that we're standing <laughs> in. So they take the ship through the asteroid belt, which is bad. It's always bad. It's and bad. then there's uh, one of the giant worms like is on uh, Empire. Uh, Empire. And the, uh, the, the rebel flies into the worm's mouth. And uh, the... Uh, the Empire commander's like, follow him. And they're like, into the giant space slug? He's like, yes! We're pointy. We're bigger. <laughs> I mean, he's just, he's just desperate. And uh, so they come through the, uh, um, the space slug. Well, inside of the space slugs are the, the Minot well, yeah. things. The power and leech. They're, uh, yeah, they're power leech. They, they, they leech all the power off of the Star Destroyer and they get uh, uh, and then the Rebels show up and ambush and and destroy the uh, um, destroy the Star Destroyer you know because he just made bad decision after bad decision Uh, the commander uh, ejects you know saves himself and saves his crew and the last thing you see is uh Darth Vader comes up to him. Uh, he's like, "You failed. That's unacceptable." And turns his lightsaber on. So it's just uh, kind of the you know the legend of all the the backstory of Darth Vader. Who did the Who did the art? Uh, a level. Yeah, Brian like Level. Like it was that. interesting art. It wasn't you know a lot. It, it wasn't crisp or anything but the the art conveyed a lot of emotion, emotion. And yeah look like it like it's, yeah it's they, the they, keep, they keep showing the commander and he's all bug-eyed and sweating i mean the whole shit he's like the only he seems to be the only one that's terrified of vader and uh everybody else is like well, we did okay why why can't we just <laughs> we, it was a good solid win no no we're gonna die we're yep. gonna die 
you don't understand. That's so. funny. It's uh, after a lot of the other. Th- th- this one, like I said, just short stories of yeah of uh, how badass Darth Vader <laughs> is. So. I how much it. is feared? I give it a good three and a half porns. So. Yeah, it was fun. It, it looked pretty fun. It looked funny, which is kind of different with uh, you know associate that with Darth Vader. So it's kind of fun. So the last one I'm going to do is Dark Horses, uh, Bad Luck Chuck. Um, let's see. So the writer is Leela Gwynn, and the artist is Matthew Dow Smith. Um, this is kind of, it starts off with uh, this girl's in the laundromat, and the, the washer shorts out and uh, burns the laundromat down. So she calls, she calls the fire department, and, and she goes, um, she goes. You can call the fire department. You can call the bank. This lady walks out and she goes. You can call the fire department. Call the bank. Um, so you transfer my money. So, come to find out, she is. She attracts so much bad luck that people hire her to cause bad luck. Like so, the person that has his laundromat got, like hired her. Please to, use my laundromat so it doesn't burn down. And I can collect the interest. That's exactly money. what it was. And so there's this guy that's following her, and he's uh, he's an insurance investigator. And so throughout the book, he's like he he sees her, and he's like, well, you know, uh, twenty eight of uh, twenty eight arson fires happened, and this she was with them at every single one. So we need to find her because she this so they think she's kind of an arsonist. And so she comes back to her little uh, disaster on demand business, and um, a client comes in and wants her to find her daughter. And she's apparently, like, in this kind of cultish place that um, uh, has her daughter. Like, she got her out. So does she not want her daughter back if you're hiring the bad luck person? Yeah. (laughs) Wait for it. (laughs) So uh, the investigator shows up at the the arson or the uh, laundromat, and he realizes she was there. Um, And then it cuts to the uh, Chuck. She's off on... She gets on the bus and goes to um, this town... And she's like, okay, wait for it. And all of a sudden, this um, uh, lamppost falls over. Well, um, uh, these two guys are trying to kidnap the, the daughter of this, this lady she, that hired her. And so Chuck shows up at this uh, kind of like a, a revival. And the daughter's up front with the, with the pastor. And the two guys that are trying to kidnap the girl are in the back. And so... Um, the the priest is like talking about burning all her possessions so he burns all chuck's possessions she goes this isn't good and then all of a sudden uh the thing uh sun falls in the fire and the fire gets bigger and then the two bumbling idiots that are trying to kidnap the daughter throws a propane take into the fire by accident so all this stuff like just happens over you know it's just like it's her bad luck coming into play it blows up the tank catches on fire and she takes the, the daughter and, and the daughter's like why are uh, you know why I don't want to go? Um, she, my mom's actually trying to kill me, and then she's trying to frame me for your for my murder. And so she's like, whatever, I don't care. I just want to do you know I just want to get my money. Um, so the two goons show up later, and they try to take uh, the the daughter. Um, well, from the fire, some aerosol cans in another tent explode and shoot out of the tent and hit the other guy. And then the other guy just kind of picks it up and runs off. So they they're kind of running away. And uh, the insurance adjuster ends up finding them. Oh, they go back to Chuck's place, and Chuck has all these like uh, all these uh, rabbits' feet and good luck charms everywhere throughout her apartment. She's like, "Don't touch anything. Don't move anything. <laughs> Everything has to stay where it's at." She goes, "I've been out too much lately, so I need to stay here." So she stays there, and she ends up. Um, uh, the insurance adjuster kind of finds these guys. And calls the cops, and he tells her about this girl. So they arrest Chuck, and on the way to being uh, to the police precinct, police precinct, a goat falls on the, <laughs> the cop car, and um, this is all this bad, all this stuff like the whole time. So they get to the uh, they get to the police station where Chuck and the the daughter's getting ready to be um, taken out. Well, they uh, were told that they have film of Chuck actually causing the fire. Well, they go to watch the film, and it ends up showing the guys throwing the propane tank into the thing. So 
they get framed or they get they they show up to bail the daughter out to steal the daughter and they end up getting arrested because they're like we caught you blowing the thing up and he's the good and then the insurance the justice is like no he's like they're getting away again so she ends <laughs> she ends up walking scot free and um yeah so they so he's it shows him being mad and then that's the end of that so it's a kind of a little interesting book it wasn't again like I feel a lot of the books I've read this week are not really... This one's a little bit more heavy. I think this one's got a, you know, kind of a premise that's kind of fun, but... Um, or a little bit more adult, a little darker. Uh, I The only thing I don't like about this book... Your description, I really want to read this book now. It's kind of funny. Like, I mean... However, some of the dialogue and the way that it's written got a little confusing for a little bit. I got confused on who was where and what was where. Um, and so it took me sometimes it took it took me a little bit of a minute to to go back and kind of figure out what was going on, um, and then uh, the art the art is very super sketchy. It's very like um, lots of shadows, uh, lots of like uh, uh, like scribble lines, and and so sometimes it's hard to tell who char- what character is which one, and so that got a little bit confusing too. So those are probably the two. M- minuses that I put in that, you know, it's like the story or the the writing wasn't exactly coherent all the time. Um, but you still figured it out. And then the the art was a little bit wonky for me because it was really hard to kind of see who was who. And, you know, when they had a panel, I was just like, I don't know who that is. Like, who is that? So, um, yeah, but it was an interesting, fun little read. I, I don't... If I didn't do this show, I don't think I would have ever picked it up. So... Um, one more thing to kind of add to the list of things it's like it's kind of fun and interesting to to, uh, to see all the different ones. So. There was a TV show on Fox years ago called Strange Luck. Yeah, with uh, DB Sweeney, and it was the guy had the he had good and bad luck, and he couldn't nothing ever, horrible would ever happen to him, but. He, his luck wouldn't... Like, he'd win enough at the lottery to pay for dinner, but he would never win the jackpot. Right. And at, I was... It was a fun show and, and interesting. Yeah. This one, I mean, like, it wasn't a bad read. I enjoyed it, I, I, but it was just kind of... I don't know if I could handle it every week because of the art and the... Yeah. Mostly because of the art. The art was very... not my Not my bag. But... Yeah, so that was my, yep. my picks. Well, that was all I had time to read with uh, uh, going to the convention. Yeah. And well, I, unfortunately, that was not all I read. I read a lot. I, I actually didn't get to everything that I had this week, which is starting to become an issue. <laughs> but it was what it is. Um, I read uh, Freedom Fighters number four. Um, it's okay. Like, I feel like, I don't know, like I'm ready for it to actually go somewhere. You know, it's issue it's issue four, and they're still kind of building the team up, um, and I'd like them to do a little bit more development with the with the characters, which I think they did a little bit more in this book, number four. They with the with the uh, doll girl and um, the human bomb kind of had a little bit of uh, some growing stuff, and so I, I I don't know. I wish they had. A, I don't know. I, I don't. It's missing something. It's just okay for me. So three out of five unicorn horns. Uh, Friend Nando, um, that one was an interesting. I, I, it was about this guy, but he has this digital person with him, and he's an assassin, I think. But they talk about these, I don't even know, like these action figures that were buried on this land, and but this other guy gets contracted to. Ki- it was. Who's that by? Uh, oh, I don't know. Um. Let me see. It was a very convoluted story. I, I, I didn't quite understand what... But this was issue five, so I think it was only five out of uh, Vault. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Publishers... Yeah. Is Vault Comics? I don't, I don't know. Like, I... I was a little disappointed because I didn't... I, it was, I didn't understand anything that was going on. But I jumped in at issue five. So they may they hopefully they explain everything up until then, but this was not a good book to, and it didn't interest me enough to want to go back 
like I was just like so confused by the end of this book that I was just like I don't even care about the characters anymore I don't want to I don't want to and so I'd say one out of five unicorn horns not my favorite I, if people re, if people enjoyed it I'm glad they did but I didn't understand it um, Zodiac uh, by Zenoscope um, I think it's Zenoscope yes yeah that one's fun. It's it, it's an action book. Uh, kind of interesting characters. I, I actually recently kind of become a fan of Zenoscope due to some of our friends. And so um, I'm slowly reading things with them. And I like the Zodiac one. It was kind of fun. It's, you know, there's nothing really... There's not a lot of m- m- minutia to get through. Like, I don't have a lot of backstory that I have. To, they catch me up pretty quick. They do their thing, they tell a story, it's done. So, I enjoy it. Uh, I give that probably three out of five unicorn horns. Um, Honor and Curse was about the, it's kind of like this anime kind of thing where this guy, he kind of has, um, uh, he's kind of cursed to be a certain way and uh, this lady is like uh, one of these head ninjas but they send this guy in to um, stop this band of things and it ends up being her it, it was okay i felt like it wasn't a story that i was super excited about and he has like some kind of demon inside of him that helps stop her or stop the stop the bands of bad guys from stop from killing things and i don't know it was okay it was number two i probably won't go back and read number one or number three so probably two out of five unicorn horns i can see where people would enjoy it but it it didn't spark my interest enough to to grab it. Shazam number four. I really like this book. It's fun. They have the different have magic you seen lands. Movie yet? No, not yet. No, so. Not either. Friday. How's that Friday? Oh, I thought April fifth. I've got some friends that's already seen it. Maybe they got a sneak preview or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's April fifth. I don't know. I probably won't go see it. It doesn't look. I'll wait. I think that one, I, I, I may wait a little bit to go see that and see what everybody says to form before I'm like, see if it's worth going to waste my money. Because it's so expensive to go to the movies now. It's not even expensive for the movie, it's like expensive for like. Because <laughs> I have to get popcorn, and I have to get a snack, and I have to get, well, you know, a drink. Get popcorn, you gotta get a drink. Yeah. You get a drink, well, you want something sweet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, it's like. It's like thirty bucks for concessions and like I've a ten dollar ticket. I've been here for two hours. I'm starving when I get done. Yeah. Oh, I'll just pick something to eat on the way home. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know how this works. But the 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 comic is really fun. I really like the premise of it. They've got all the different Shazam families, and there there's all these different magical lands that they have. And, and um, at the end of it, uh, Black Adam shows up to. You know, it's like da 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 da. So I'm kind of excited to see. I enjoy it. I like it a lot. So four out of five unicorn horns. The art's really good. The Dale Englisham is uh, doing the art, I think, and he um, did uh, JSA for a little while, and that was really good. Um, the Synergy a Hasbro Creations Showcase. I it was just Hasbro uh, stories from Hasbro's uh, different toy lines and stuff like that, and so like they, it was horrible. I've not heard good things about any of their no. No, nope, this one was not. Sorry to say. Yep, no, nope, no. Nope. Sadly, a lot of their books, though, are actually pretty decent. Like, uh, My Little Pony is pretty fun. I mean, obviously, it lends itself to a younger audience. And um, The Gem was really good. Uh, G.I. Joe, I can't get under on board. I tried a couple times. And uh, Transformers, same way. I tried to get on board with that, and I just can't. Um, and that was all my digital ones. I, I have several ones of the uh, that I didn't get to as far as reading, but... And the ones that I did get to, I got to Fantastic Four, number eight. I don't, I don't we know. We waited so long. And, and we're still horrible. And we're still and so, Yeah, I'm like, they, I just don't, I, and I don't even know how, like, I couldn't even tell you how to fix it. Like, it's not, like, I can't even tell you, no, I would rather have this. Or, like, I would, I think it'd be better if it did this. It's just not good. Like, I mean, like, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know why. It's just weird. Uh, Avengers Never at Home, number seven. I really like this book. Um, the cast of characters is really cool. They brought in Conan, and they didn't do it in a way that was, like, really stupid. Like, they actually kind of did found a way to kind of bring him in. To, it, it's kind of interesting. Like, I mean, and it's not like Conan's... Conan's not Conan. Like, Conan is Conan, where he's like, he's like, he almost kills the vision, because he's like, he's like, uh, Gollum! And he's like, yeah, it's like, 
<laughs> evil witch you know, it's like he just it's funny so I but I really like the cast the, like the the actual group of characters um, it's got a uh, what is her name now Photon Synergy Captain Marvel whatever like whatever her name may be this week um, I really like her Monica, Monica Rambo. yeah um, and it's got the Hulk and uh, Hawkeye and Vision and Hercules Scarlet Witch uh, and uh, Voyager. I thought you said Turkey Lees. I'm like, who is that Turkey a... Lees? Well, he kind of is too. <laughs> he is a little bit of a turkey. Uh, Spectrum. She's called Spectrum. And uh, Rocket. And so they, they've got a really good cast of characters. So I, I've enjoyed it. Um, so for, uh, I'd say five out of five unicorn horns. Definitely a superhero book. I really enjoy. The art, art's really good for the most part. Um, they kind of stay with the. They stay with one artist, but then they. Well, they switch between artists, but the artist that takes over is very similar to the artist that was, so it's not very... I still can tell who everybody is. Um, X-Force number five. This has sadly gone downhill really quick. Like, I really had high hopes. And the art is atrocious. The art just gets worse and worse and worse. It's by the same person, but it's just like he doesn't care a lot. It's either he's under time crunch, or he just doesn't care, or this is his actual style. But it's just like, it seems like it gets more and more sketchy and I can't tell who is who and I don't know, I don't know. I can't even tell like what's an arm or what's, it's just, it's just sad. And it's all dark, everything's dark and washed out and just, it's really sad. Because, and I really want more Boom Boom. Boom Boom is hysterical. So, yeah, two out of five, uni actually probably one out of five unicorn horns. I'm probably going to have to get that book up soon. Um, same with the, the uh, Age of X-Men, I'm ready for this to be over with. Um, it seems like all of the books are doing the same story, even though they're all different books. So it's they're in a land where they're not supposed to be love, and they're not supposed to have relationships, either familiar or familiar or um, or like romantic, familial. Yeah, thank you. I was like, what's the word I'm looking for? So yeah, any they don't have any kind of relationship like that. So, but so all the books involve them having some kind of relationship and I'm like you just literally produced four books with relationships and I'm like it's the same story I, was, I really had high hopes because the actual the first first couple books were actually really neat I was like this is a new world it's kind of exciting it's because I'm new and the Uncanny X-Men leading up to this was really good like they had a really you know they were fighting X-Men and they were fighting Legion and they just like had you know like it was really neat but wah 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 and they failed so sad uh, speaking of failures, which one number 67? I don't even know what to say about this anymore. I just... The art is... Uh, the art is just... Horrible. Uh, it, it just, uh, I mean, look at the... I mean, like, that... What, what? Like, I think if this is... Like, if this was an independent book, or this was not one of your flagship books, like, I would be like, okay... But, like, this is, yeah, it's just, she looks like a skinny, like, she's supposed to be an Amazon. She has, like, no muscles. They keep talking about, they bring in these, like, the, this girl's gonna have to try to sleep with this fawn character. It's just an awkward, I don't know. It's just, I don't know what, what's going on with that. Two out of five unicorn horns. The only reason it gets two is because it's Wonder Woman. I love Wonder Woman. Too bad she's been running to the ground. <laughs> like, like quick, fast, in a hurry. And so I think there's, I think there's a purge coming in my comic book list. Unfortunately, I know. I think Justice League's probably gonna have to go. Avengers, Wonder Woman, <laughs> some of the X books, which is super sad. Makes me want to cry a little bit, but it's okay. I'll get through it. I'll get through it. Strong Alan. Strong Alan. It's okay. Strong Alan. <laughs> All right, well, that was our books for the week, and that was our uh, amazing opinions. So uh, tell us if you agree or don't don't agree. Uh, we'd love to hear comments. Uh, see, we'd love to have a start conversation to see what uh, everybody's reading, what everybody thinks about the books. Um, and uh, we hope to uh, see you back next week when we explore some more. But until then, we hope your pull list is full. Oh, if you can, like, share, and subscribe. Turn on the bell notification so you're notified when we do new videos. Um, we'd love to have more people. Um, and we'd love to reach as many people around the world as possible. But until then, we hope your pull list is full. Bye.